talk about today is about how much God loves us. Amen. That's what John 3.16 is all about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we are going through the Bible from creation on through uh, Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, Tower of Babel. Now we're up to Abraham. And now we're up to Abraham's promised son and what the sacrifice that God asked Abraham to make. Amen. And this is an illustration of the love of a father's heart. Praise God. We see all the way back with Abraham, the love of a father's heart and what it means to a father and a son. Also, the life of Isaac, uh, Abraham's son, uh, is, uh, has in his life many pictures of Jesus. Wow. Remember we said the Bible is pictures of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. That's the Bible. It's pictures of Jesus from beginning to end. But this man's life, Isaac, he has like more pictures of Jesus than anybody in wow. his life. Praise There's God. a lot of pictures of Jesus in the life of Isaac. Praise the Lord. Isaac's life and Jesus' life are very, very similar. And so we learn a lot about Jesus, the Son of God, through the life of Isaac. And we learn a lot about the Father through the relationship that Isaac has with his father, Abraham. Amen. So at the end of this lesson, I want you to be ready to tell us several ways in which Jesus and Isaac, Isaac are, alike. are alike. Okay. Look for that. We're going to talk about lots of ways Jesus and Isaac are alike. I'm looking. And that's what you want to try to remember. Okay. Okay. Harold, would you read this? Abraham and Sarah wanted a child very much. But for many years, God did not give them one. One day, three angels came to see Abraham and promised him that God would give him and Sarah a son. Even though they were too old to have a baby, Isaac was born just as God had promised. Okay, so this was going to take a miracle for Isaac to be born. Amen. It was going to take a miracle because Abraham... And Sarah were so old. Uh -huh. They were so very, very old. They were 90 and 100 years old. Wow. So how were they going to have a baby? It was going to be a, a miracle. miracle. It had to be a miracle. So God promised this son would be born. Uh -huh. And it was going to take a miracle for this son to be born. Thank you, Remind Jesus. us of anybody? <laughs> yes. What does this one say? Jesus is also a promised son. The Bible is full of promises that the Son of God would come someday, and he did. All right, so all the way through the whole Bible, from Genesis all the way to Malachi, are promises mm -hmm. that this Son of God was going to come, that this Messiah was going to come to save Israel. Amen. And this promise goes all the way through the whole Bible. And so he's that promised son, just like Isaac was. Amen. Promised of God. That promise, and once God makes a promise, he never goes back on it. Amen. It is going to happen because God made the promise. And this promised son, this Messiah, is all is a theme of the whole Old Testament. Also, it was going to take a miracle for Isaac to be born. Amen. Because his mommy and daddy were so old. That's right. His parents were just so old, older than most people that are alive today. Right. Older than most people's grandma and grandpas. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be a miracle. Does anybody know whether it was needed to be a miracle for Jesus to be born? Yes. Yes, because uh, uh, Mary uh, did not know a man. Uh, she had no relations with a man. And Jesus, uh, it was called the Immaculate Conception. It, it was born by the power of the Holy Spirit between, just Very between good. Mary and God. Usually it's a man and a woman together mm -hmm. that make a baby. Yes. But Mary did not have a, a man in her life, and her baby was a miracle. Amen. It was a miracle that she got pregnant. So, so now, just like Isaac, Jesus is a promised son of God. Yes, amen. Just like Isaac, 
Jesus is a miracle son of God. Amen. It took a miracle for Jesus to be born. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, read this one. God tested Abraham and said, Abraham. And he said, here am I. God said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice upon one of the mountains. All right, this is where we're learning what it means to have a father's heart, a true father's heart. Abraham was a father who loved his son. Amen. It says right here, God even knows how much he loves him. He says, this son whom you love. Yes. And God knows that Abraham loves this boy. Yes. And he says, I want you to take this boy I want you to climb Mount Moriah with him, uh -huh. and at the top of that mountain, I want you to sacrifice wow. him. Now, it says here that God tested Abraham mm -hmm. when he asked him to do this. Yes. He was seeing if Abraham would trust him and obey him. Right. And a lot of times, the things that God asks us to do don't make sense. That's right. They just don't make sense, but if we trust him, and obey him, then God is going to show us his glory. Yes, And that's you, what's Lord. going to happen for Abraham. Mm -hmm. But God understands the heart of this father because he is a father. Yes. Oh, he has God. a son Thank you, Lord. named Jesus. He knows already in his heart what it means to sacrifice a son. Amen. The father God in his heart has already sacrificed his son, yes. Jesus for the sin of the world. It hasn't taken place yet, but it's taken place in his heart as if it were done. And so he is asking Abraham to feel something he's felt, mm -hmm. to feel what it would be like to have to sacrifice your son. Could you read this? John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, so this is the father heart of God. Abraham is just an example, a type, a picture mm -hmm. of the real father who is Father God. Yes. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believes in him. So he says, your son whom you love. Mm -hmm. And Abraham understood what it meant to love a son. Yes, amen. But this scripture says, God so loved the world. Yes, praise God. And so if it means that much to love a son, mm -hmm. and how hard it is to sacrifice a son, well, how much more must God love the world? Yes, thank you, Lord. That Praise he God. be willing to sacrifice his son for the love of the world. For all his prodigal sons. God so loved the world. Yes. It's prodigal sons, like you said. It's, it reminds me of the shepherd who was willing to leave the 90 and 9. Yes. To find the one that was lost. Mm -hmm. He loved his son, mm -hmm. but he could not be satisfied with the condition of the world. Mm -hmm. He so loved the world, he was willing to sacrifice his son that mm. whoever believes in him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting life. Could you read this one? Back then, blood sacrifices were made for sin. They would build an altar of stone and sacrifice a perfect lamb. This sacrifice was actually a picture of God's perfect lamb, Jesus Christ. God's Son was coming into the world to sacrifice himself for our sin. Jesus was perfect. So this was a very unusual request that God was making of Abraham. Yeah. Because the normal request was that one would go up Mount Moriah mm -hmm. and sacrifice a lamb. a lamb. And this sacrifice of the lamb would be a substitute for your sin right. for the past year. Uh -huh. And they would sacrifice a lamb. And that was the normal request. And so for God to ask Abraham, no, climb up the mountain and don't sacrifice a lamb, 
but sacrifice your, your son. son and make your son be the lamb. Wow. Now the lamb was to be a perfect lamb. Uh -huh. And this was a perfect son because he was the promised son. Uh -huh. He was the best thing yes. that Abraham could ever have. Finally, after a hundred years, mm -hmm. God gave him his promised son. What could be more perfect than God, that? God's provision. Yes. And this, uh, this lamb was itself mm -hmm. a picture of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because it dies for our sins. Mm -hmm. It's a substitute who is punished for no sin of its own, mm -hmm. but sins of the people. Amen. And God's Son is promised that He would come into the world and He would be called the Lamb of God. Could you read that? God commanded Abraham to offer a sacrifice, but instead of a lamb, God required Abraham's only son, Isaac. God said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so greatly, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him for a burnt offering to me. It's a very strange request. Yes. They understood what a burnt offering was. Yes. They understood that a burnt offering was a substitution for their sins and it was normally a lamb. Yes. And now God is saying, sacrifice your son. Mm -hmm. But he knew that Abraham had this father's heart, mm -hmm. but he also had obedience and faith. Yes. And trust. And so he could use Abraham to give us this lesson that we have today. Well, wow. Could you read this? Abraham was very sad, but he trusted God and obeyed. He took two men and a donkey to carry the wood for the fire. He went toward the mountain with Isaac, his son. On the third day, Abraham saw the mountain far away. All right. So they loaded up the donkey. They took the wood. Uh, and they took the fire, which is a perpetual fire that, they, mm -hmm. that was kept alive in a jar, and they went toward the mountain, which was three days away. Mm -hmm. Did you read this? As they came near the mountain, Abraham said to the men, stay here with the donkey while I go up the mountain with Isaac to worship. And when we have worshipped, we will come back to you. All right. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, he says to the men that were accompanying them on mm -hmm. this trip to stay here with the donkey. Um, so uh, they were going to have to take the sticks because that donkey mm -hmm. had been carrying the sticks up to this point. But he says, while I go up with uh, the mountain with Isaac, mm -hmm. So he's pointing out here that it is with his son, mm -hmm. me and Isaac. Yes. Well, I go up to the mountain with Isaac to worship. Worship. Mm -hmm. To worship. He doesn't say, well, to do something hard that I've got to do. Right. You know, pray for me, guys. Yes. Right. He understands he is worshiping. Yes. He understands that trusting God and obeying God to do what he has to do, to yes. do what he said to do, is an act of worship. Amen. And so he is giving the Lord this worship. So I'm going up to the mountain, not just to do something hard, pray for me, but he's going up to worship. He's already given it up in his heart. Yes. As worship. Yes. And when we have worshipped, that is Isaac and me, mm -hmm are both going to worship up there, We're we both will come back. Both going to come back. So he has some kind of trust or faith in I'd, his heart. I'd like to ask him, what was he thinking? <laughs> Where he's actually in, 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 envisioning a resurrection. Yes. He yeah. believes he's going to sacrifice his son, but somehow his son will be alive again, yes. and they will both come down the mountain. Yes. He's envisioning some kind of resurrection. Right. Read this one. Isaac is a picture of Jesus carrying his own cross up to Mount Calvary. All right. So the, the sticks came off the back of the donkey, and they were placed on the back 
of Isaac. Yes. And we see here an Old Testament beautiful picture uh -huh. where Isaac is carrying his own sticks yes. upon which he will be crucified. Yes. On these own sticks, on these very pieces of wood, right. he is going to be sacrificed, not crucified, but sacrificed yes. Yes. as a burnt offering. And Jesus also had his cross laid upon his own shoulders yes. to carry up that mountain towards his own sacrifice. Amen. So Isaac's life has so many pictures of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Isaac uh, and Abraham had uh, three things for the, uh, for the sacrifice. They had the wood, they had fire, uh -huh. which was already alive, and a knife. Wow. So Harold, could you read The that? fire and knife in the hand of Abraham reminds us of God the Father and how he judged our sin upon his only son on the cross. Okay. Wow. Cool. So Abraham, Isaac carried the wood, wood. for his own sacrifice, mm -hmm. but the Father carried fire and a mm -hmm. knife. Just like Jesus carried the cross. Jesus his own wood. carried the cross. But God judged Jesus mm -hmm. on the cross. Amen. The judgment of God came down upon Jesus. Amen. The fiery judgment, should we say, mm -hmm. the knife of judgment, mm -hmm. the judgment of God was in the hands of the Father. Did God enjoy that? No. Of course not. Mm -hmm. No more than Abraham would his precious son, Isaac. Mm -hmm. He had the fire. He would have had to light that wood yes. under his son. Yes. He had the knife. He would have had to carve that boy. Yes. He was not uh, enjoying that at all any more than our Father God mm -hmm. enjoyed the judgment of sin that came upon Jesus yes. on the cross. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. It was difficult. It was hard. It was the worst, worst day in the Father's life. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Could you read this? Abraham took the wood for the sacrifice and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac, his son. And he took the fire and a knife, and the two of them went on together. As they were walking, Isaac said, My father... See, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, My son, God will, will provide himself a lamb. And so now we see the faith of Abraham mm -hmm. coming out. Isaac is confused. He says, I understand we're going up to the top of Mount Moriah to make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Here is the wood. Mm -hmm. Here is the knife. Here is the fire. Mm -hmm. Where is the lamb? Mm -hmm. And Abraham says, don't worry. God will provide himself a sacrifice. Or huh. Provide himself a lamb. Yes, yes. And this is one of those moments which we have many of in the Old Testament where Abraham doesn't even realize he's being used to say something prophetic. Yes. He's being used to prophesy mm -hmm. about the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. These m words are being placed in his mouth as prophecy wow. to be written in the Bible. Thank you, Lord. He says, God will provide himself, himself a, a lamb. lamb. Praise God. Thank God you, Lord. will provide himself a, a lamb. lamb. So God is using Abraham to talk about the future. Huh. Jesus is the Lamb, the true Lamb of God, that God provides for the sin of the Praise world. Praise God. Thank you, Not Jesus. only Hallelujah. is He going to provide a Lamb on Mount Moriah in this little incident between Abraham and Isaac, but He is going to provide a Lamb to take away the sin of the world. Yes. And that Lamb is going to take the form of a precious, promised Son. Thank you, Lord. The Son of God, you, born Jesus. of a miracle birth. Yes. Jesus Christ. God will provide himself. As a matter of fact, all of this so far is God 
providing himself the lamb. He's yes. working toward it in promises, mm -hmm. in, in, in prophecy. He's working toward providing this lamb. And that lamb is Jesus Christ. Praise God. Did you read this? Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on it. Then he tied the hands and the feet of his only son Isaac and laid him on the altar. Abraham was stretched forth, uh, Abraham stretched forth his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. All right. That's complete obedience. Yeah. That is complete obedience. But these are the hardest moments mm -hmm. in Abraham's life. Yes. Uh, uh, what's going to happen? What, how is God going to do this? Because on the one hand, he tells me to sacrifice this boy. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, he told me that I would have this boy, and through this boy, all the nations of the earth will, will be, be blessed. blessed. Yes. And somehow God has to keep both, uh, do both things. Yes. He's got to have me obey him, and yet bless the whole world through this boy. Amen. And what a difficult thing it must have been for Abraham to tie yes. Isaac's hands and feet, mm -hmm. to lay him on that wood, that mm -hmm. uh, wood altar, um, and to stretch up his hand yes. with the knife yes. to slay his son. Did you read this one? Jesus was also bound by his hands and feet. Like Isaac, Jesus was obeying and trusting his father. Jesus was obedient to death. He willingly laid down his life. All right. And so here again we have a, uh, another um, picture of Jesus in the life of Isaac. Isaac's hands and feet were bound. Jesus' hands and feet were also bound. Amen. With nails. Yes. They, he was nailed to his wood. Mm -hmm. um, Isaac was tied, tied. down. Yes. His wood. Jesus was nailed to his cross. Uh, Isaac willingly mm -hmm. let his father yes. uh, tie him to, the, to that altar. And Jesus willingly, he said, no man takes my life from me. Mm. I lay it Praise down. God. He went willingly with them. He willingly laid upon that cross and allowed them to nail his hands and wow. feet. The Bible says that Jesus was obedient to his Father, even obedient unto the death. death of the cross. Yes. Obedience all the way to the death of the cross, like young Isaac. Yes. Yes. Obedient to his Father. He willingly laid down his life. How? The angel of the Lord called, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you obey God. You have not held back from giving your son your only son. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So at this moment, there is a real uh, commonality mm -hmm. between Abraham yes. and God the Father. Yes. They both know what it's like yes. to sacrifice their only begotten son. Amen. How close God must have felt to Abraham right. at that moment. Mm -hmm. They both know what it's like. Only God was going to have to really do it. Yes. And Abraham was spared at the last second. Uh, he had done it in his heart. Yes. But he yeah. didn't have to do it for real. Yes. But all the affinity between Abraham and God the Father, mm -hmm. the understanding between them, what it means to sacrifice a son whom you love so much. Amen. God shall provide himself a lamb, a substitute for sin's judgment, himself. Abraham looked up, saw a ram caught in a thicket. Abraham took the ram and offered it instead of his son. He called the place the Lord will provide or Jehovah Jireh in Hebrew. It is said to this day on the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Jesus, our substitute lamb, also died on a mount. He provided salvation for the world. Praise God. So that's a saying uh, 
that they wrote that it said to this day there is this saying on the mount the Lord will provide mm -hmm. which is also that saying was a prophetic utterance yes speaking of a mountain one day Mount mm -hmm. Calvary mm -hmm. and on that mountain God would provide mm -hmm. and that provision would be the Lamb of God isn't don't some his, historians think that Moriah is Calvary yes and that's in contention yeah so it could be they're yeah. they're the same mountain or it could be that they're not but definitely on the mountain yes God provided himself a lamb. Praise God. So, God shall provide himself a lamb, a substitute for God's judgment. Notice that it says God shall provide himself, himself yes. a lamb. Not just provide for himself yes. a lamb, but give himself as, as the, lamb. the lamb. He shall provide himself yes. a lamb. He became flesh yes. and dwelt among us. God became flesh mm -hmm. and he became the lamb. Yes. He could not find any other adequate substitute. He could not find mm -hmm. one righteous man in all the world. Mm -hmm. So he became flesh. Yeah. He lived that righteous life so that he could be Praise an God. appropriate substitute for our sins. Praise God. So Abraham saw this ram caught in the thicket. That was what God was providing for Abraham right. that day. And he took the ram and he offered it instead of his son. Because it wasn't time yet. Yes. Jesus is the son. Yes. The true son that would be offered for the sin of the world. And prophetically they said unto that day on the mount of the Lord it will be provided which is, uh, uh, in the Hebrew, Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Now we sing Jehovah Jireh a lot, my provider, and we're talking about, you know, food on the table, or rent money for the landlord. Uh -huh. Right, right, right. But originally it was about a sin sacrifice for our sins. Amen. The Lamb of God, Jehovah Jireh, we think that it's, it's a problem not to have food on the table or a problem not to have rent for the landlord. Yes. But the real problem in our life is the sin problem yes. and the judgment coming. And this is the biggest problem in any person's life. There is a sin problem and there is a coming judgment. But yes. Jehovah Jireh, Amen. God has provided. Yes. He has taken care of our sin problem yes. and the coming judgment. Jesus is our sacrifice on the cross, our substitute. He was judged so that we wouldn't have to be judged. Amen. Amen. He bore our sins on his body and he received the judgment of God so that we could be free. Preach it. Amen. If we just believe. Yeah. If we Amen. just say, Jesus, Amen. I God. believe. Amen. I am a sinner, but you died for me. Cleanse me of my sin. Amen. And this is what God provided. Mm -hmm. So when we sing Jehovah Jireh, my provider, when we say Jehovah Jireh, my provider, let us not just think of paying the rent. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us remember what this verse is all about. He provided salvation Amen. for our Amen. souls Praise God. at the cross on Mount Calvary. Thank you, Lord. Did you read this? To Abraham, it was as if his son were raised from the dead. Like Isaac, Jesus was also miraculously delivered from death. Isaac is a picture of the resurrection of Jesus. Wow. All right. Cool. So again, pictures parallel. of Jesus yeah. in the life. Isaac's life has so many pictures of Jesus. Pictures of Jesus. And so, as he was born miraculously, he was miraculously delivered mm -hmm. from death. Mm -hmm. He wasn't actually raised from the dead as Abraham was willing 
to yes. believe that God could even do that. Yes. But he was almost raised from the dead uh -huh. because he was that close to being yes. dead. Yes. Yes. When miraculously an angel came and grabbed Abraham's hand yes. and said, don't hurt the boy. Uh -huh. It was that close. Praise God. And to Abraham, Isaac had already died because he'd already done the act in obedience in yeah. his mind. Amen. And so at that moment, it was a resurrection. At yes. that moment, Isaac was alive from the dead. Yeah. And again, we see that parallel to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac is a picture of the resurrection of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Christ was died for our sins. He was the true burnt offering. Yes. He was actually crucified, mm -hmm. died, buried, raised again the third day. Amen. And so we see Abraham and Isaac. The life of Isaac has many pictures of Jesus. How many ways were Isaac and Jesus alike so far? Okay. Um, at the begin, the be from the from the from the get go, from the <laughs> uh, they were both conceived in in a miraculous fashion. Okay, um, uh, well, well, they're born in a miraculous fashion. I mean, uh, Isaac was conceived from his mother and father, but they, it was miraculous because they were too old. They're past birth. Yeah, past birth age. Um, um, Isaac was the most beloved of his uh, son of his father. Abraham, uh, uh, Jesus is the most beloved of, of his father. Behold, you know, my, this is my beloved son. Right. Uh, hear ye him. Before they were both promised sons. Yes, they were both, yes, they were both promised sons. Um, uh, they were, they were sacrificed. Uh, they were, uh, became, um, the, both fathers were willing to give up um, uh, their sons for, uh, uh, um, well, Abraham did it out of obedience to God. God did it out of love for, for the world. Yes. So um, there is a partial parallel there. Um, Isaac and Jesus uh, is a, uh, are, were both raised from the dead because in the mind and heart of Abraham, Abraham had, had already, and God n knows our hearts and our minds, he didn't have to have Isaac actually uh, uh, stab uh, and kill uh, Isaac. He didn't have to have Abraham stab and kill Isaac because he knew that he was absolutely ready to do so. And so um, in the heart of Abraham, Isaac had been sacrificed. And in the, in the heart of God, Jesus was sacrificed. But they both were raised from the dead. Uh, uh, and, on the, and when Isaac went up to the mountain, Abraham and Isaac went up to the mountain, they got there on the third day. Yeah. And Jesus uh, was raised from the dead on the third day. So both of their resurrections took, took place, place on the third day. uh, three days right. after the beginning of that right. particular uh, event. Yes, and it just occurred to me that Abraham was so obedient that at the beginning of those three days, he'd already crucified or, or sacrificed his son in his mind. Yes. And so for three days, Yes. To Abraham, mm -hmm. his son was, was dead. Was dead. Yeah. And he was raised on the third day. Yeah. Yes. Praise yeah. God. He was released. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to look at a story uh, that uh, a very, very good example of the Father heart of God and his his uh, sacrifice of his son. It's an old story I heard many years ago about a, ma a, a master bridge maker. Okay. And the, the master bridge maker uh, or bridge watcher, mm -hmm. he would go every day and he, it was his job to open and close the, the, the bridge uh -huh. for the train that was coming through. I see, a drawbridge. The drawbridge. And if the, tra if the, if the bridge wasn't opened, uh, if the connection wasn't made, then everyone on the train would die. And right. it was his job to watch for the train uh -huh. and to make that connection. 
and his son liked to go with him yes. every day. And the story is, and it's just a story, uh, a made-up story to illustrate what the father's, the father heart of God mm -hmm. uh, was like when he had to sacrifice his son. But the story is that his son was somehow God was playing around or somehow got himself where the very gears were uh. that would turn when the um, connections were made. Amen. Right. And the father saw the train coming, huh. but at the same time he saw his, his son, son down in the gears. Crap. And he had a split second. If he pulls the lever, mm -hmm. then the, every, the train and everyone on the train is Pastor saved. Saved. But his son dies. If he doesn't pull the lever, then uh, his son will be saved because the gears will not turn. But the train the, goes the off train. the track wow. and everyone on the train will die. What a, what a choice. And he has this choice. And this is the father's choice. Uh -huh. When we say, for God so loved the world, uh -huh. it's like that world is that train yes we're on the train we're on the train and he has to choose he has to make the ridiculous choice mm -hmm. will when he finally when he realizes the only way to save the world is to sacrifice, sacrifice. his son huh. and he has to make that choice he could not sacrifice his son mm. and say well and the world they, would be they're lost. dead in their sin anyway. Yes, the world would be lost. And the world would be lost. Or he could save the world, but it will cost him the life of his son. Hmm. And we uh, need to understand, and the Bible tries to make us understand, through this story of Abraham and Isaac, uh -huh. what is really in the heart of Father God mm -hmm. when he sacrifices his son Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. That's what's in the heart. Yes. It's close to what was in the heart of Abraham. Praise so God. let's watch this little film based on this story. Okay, amen. You can read these. Once there was a man. who had a son that he loved very much. Thank you, Jesus. Closing prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful preaching of your word today, the wonderful salvation message, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for a faithful uh, a servant of yours who preaches your word without compromise. Thank you, Jesus, so much, oh God. Lord, let every single word that was spoken today, Lord God, uh, and having been heard by anyone, passerby, Lord God, let it take deep root uh, uh, in the hearts of the souls who need you. We thank you for today, Lord. You're a wonderful Lord Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.